Throughout history, when words failed, some turned to blades and bullets. But what happens when an assassination misses its mark? It doesn't just fail. It backfires in ways no one sees coming. Assassinations have always been a tool to force political change when all else has failed. Julius Caesar, in 44 BC, was stabbed 23 times by a group of senators who believed they were saving the Roman Republic. What they didn't anticipate was that Caesar's death would unravel the very fabric of the Republic they sought to preserve, plunging Rome into civil wars and ultimately giving rise to the Roman Empire under Augustus Caesar. Fast forward to 1914 and another assassination would shake the world to its core. Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria is shot by Gravillo Princip, igniting the powder keg that was Europe in the early 20th century. This singular act of violence triggers World War I, a conflict that claimed over 16 million lives and redrew the world's political map. The world Franz Ferdinand lived in was forever changed, but not for the reasons Princip might have envisioned. And again in the 20th century, if you believe the conventional narrative, John F. Kennedy's assassination in 1963 did more than end a presidency. It shattered America's sense of innocence. Lee Harvey Oswald's bullet wasn't just aimed at JFK. It tore into the nation's collective psyche. Kennedy's death left a legacy of conspiracy theories, distrust in the government, and an unraveling of the faith in the institutions that bound American society together at the time. The takeaway from these examples is that assassins may pull the trigger thinking they're changing the future, but history has shown time and time again the chaos that they unleash is rarely what they envisioned. Let's delve into the psychology of people killing leaders for a moment here. Why do people turn to assassination? The reason often stems from a toxic mix of fanaticism, political frustration, and the belief that removing a leader will magically alter the system. John Wilkes Booth saw himself as a hero, ending the tyranny of Abraham Lincoln. But instead of halting executive overreach and preventing tyrannical policies that, even at the time during the Civil War, were considered excessive by many, instead, Booth turned Lincoln into a martyr, ensuring the legacy of his policies would endure even till this day. But political assassinations aren't always about ideology. Some are deeply personal, driven by revenge or desperation. In 1981, John Hinckley Jr. attempted to assassinate Ronald Reagan, not for political reasons, not for ideological reasons, but because he wanted to impress actress Jodie Foster. In a twisted mind, killing the leader of the free world was the ultimate grand gesture he could give. In a way, I think he took trying to get a girl's attention by acting out a little too far. But beyond the personal motives, there lies a deeper question. What makes someone believe that the life or death of one person can shift the course of history? For some, the assassination of a leader feels like destiny. For history, it's a roll of the dice. Sometimes it comes up snake eyes. We began this video by delving into why people commit assassinations, and we looked at some examples that succeeded. But what about when they miss? One of the most famous failed assassination attempts in history was the Valkyrie plot to kill Hitler in July 1944. High-ranking German officers led by Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg planted a bomb during a meeting, believing that killing Hitler would save Germany from its impending doom. The bomb exploded, but Hitler survived with only minor injuries. Rather than destabilize the Nazi regime, the plot solidified Hitler's grip on power. The failed attempt led to brutal purges within the German military and the execution of over 4,000 people connected to the plot. Instead of ending the war, the failed assassination only deepened the violence and solidified the power of Hitler. Ronald Reagan in 1981 was struck by his would-be assassin's bullet, but instead of dying, Reagan recovered and his approval ratings soared. The attempted murder turned him into a symbol of resilience, making him nearly untouchable for the remainder of his presidency. And history may be repeating itself before our very eyes. After surviving two failed assassination attempts, Trump's approval seems to have struck a chord with voters and he appears to be stronger than ever in his resolve to continue his campaign. And why wouldn't you? With the numbers that he's been seeing, I don't think anybody would argue against doing so. History is funny like that. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Some would say endlessly talking in circles, like many politicians do, but uh, anyway, I digress. Back to the video. 
Even Fidel Castro, the Cuban leader who survived over 600 assassination attempts by various means, including poison cigars, exploding seashells, a poison diving suit, oddly enough, in there, he used these failed attempts to reinforce his narrative of being the underdog fighting against imperialism. Far from weakening Castro, these attempts only solidified his power and turned him into a symbol of resilience against U.S. intervention. The point is, when assassins miss, they don't just fail. They often make their targets untouchable icons of survival. Failed assassinations rarely leave things as they were. Instead, they create ripple effects that lead to even more authoritarian crackdowns or solidify the power of the leader they tried to kill. After the failed assassination of Hitler, he ramped up his paranoia, purging those he suspected of disloyalty and tightening his grip on power. It may have been a contributing factor to the increase in pace of the Holocaust. The German military was also gutted by his vengeance, contributing to his eventual defeat in the war. In the case of Reagan, the assassination attempt gave him an aura of invincibility. Political opponents found it harder to criticize a man who had literally dodged death. His recovery and return to office boosted public sympathy, strengthening his presidency during a critical period in the Cold War. Failed attempts also have a chilling effect on dissent. After the Valkyrie plot, the Nazi regime cracked down harder on internal resistance, making it even more dangerous to oppose the government. Failed assassinations don't just kill individuals, they often kill hope for reform, making the political environment even more repressive. Sometimes, a failed assassination is worse than a successful one, because what follows is an iron grip of control, a government paranoid and determined to root out every last threat. Assassinations may seem like relics of a more violent political past, but they remain relevant today. In 2020, Iranian General Qasem Soleimani was successfully assassinated by a U.S. drone strike. While technically successful, this assassination didn't weaken Iran's military influence. In fact, it galvanized anti-U.S. sentiment across the Middle East, leading to massive demonstrations and retaliatory attacks. Killing Soleimani didn't eliminate the threat. If anything, it escalated tensions and expedited Iran's attempt to control the Middle East politically. Let's not forget the rise of cyber assassinations as well. Targeted killings done through hacking and sabotage aim to disrupt governments without a single shot being fired. The stakes may have changed, but the motivation behind removing leaders remains the same. A mix of political desperation and the belief that killing one person can alter an entire system. Even in the digital age, assassinations remain the ultimate political gamble, and when it fails, the world pays the price. The consequences of failed political assassinations resonate in modern policymaking. The failed attempt to kill Hugo Chavez in 2002 strengthened his position, transforming him into a populist martyr. Surviving assassination attempts allowed leaders like Castro, Reagan, and Chavez to reinforce their positions, often using the attacks as justification to tighten control, increase security measures, and suppress dissent. This pattern echoes through history. When an assassination fails, it often strengthens the regime rather than weakening it. In an era where drone strikes and covert operations are becoming more common, the risk of political assassination is ever-present. Yet the lessons of history remain clear. Failed assassination attempts rarely lead to the outcomes their perpetrators envision. Instead of liberating people from tyranny, they often cement it further, creating martyrs out of the leaders they aimed to kill. If there is one thing history teaches us, it's that assassination is a double-edged sword. When it misses, it backlashes and often is more dangerous than the bullet itself. In the end, assassination is a tool of desperation, an attempt to force history's hand. But history, as we have seen time and time again, doesn't bend so easily. For every leader killed, another rises. For every failed attempt, a regime strengthens its hold. Assassins may believe that they're changing the world, but more often than not, they end up cementing the very power they sought to destroy. In trying to silence a leader, assassins often end up amplifying their voice. History shows us that while a bullet can kill a man, it can never kill an idea. I've been Drex Hawkins. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, my friends. If I'm being honest, he actually did look pretty good smoking a cigar. What can I say? Evil has a sense of style.
and history very well might be repeating itself after surviving two failed assassination attempts so far. I don't say so far, it's gonna put me on a watch list. Ugh. <laughs> All right, and turned him into a symbol of resistance against U.S. interventionism. Interventionism? Intervention. Fuck. Assassins may... I'm just taking the top. I want this all in one. I want this all in one. 